Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today's lesson is on direct variation and function notation. And I think you're going to find this pretty easy. It's mostly just a vocabulary lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be familiar with what direct variation is, what a constant of variation is, and what function notation is. You guys should all be familiar at this point with slope-intercept form. That's just y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept. Here's an example of an equation in slope-intercept form. y equals 2x plus 3. If we graph that, it'd look just like this. Our y-intercept would be 3, and our slope would be 2, or positive 2. It's a rise of positive 2 and a run of 1. Well, how about the equation y equals 2x plus 1? The slope's the same. It's still got a slope of 2, but it's going to cross the y-intercept at 1 rather than 3. How about this equation, y equals 2x plus 0? Well, again, the slope's the same, but now we're going to cross the y-intercept at 0. Now, we could rewrite this last equation, y equals 2x. And that form, y equals 2x, is a direct variation. A direct variation is an equation or a line that passes through the origin, which is the same as saying that the y-intercept is 0. And it's a straight line and can be written in the form y equals ax. And a cannot equal 0. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Is 3x plus y equals 0 an example of direct variation? Well, let's manipulate the equation and put it into either slope-intercept form or the y equals uh, ax form. In order to do that, I need to get the 3x to the other side of the equation. I need to isolate my y so the equation reads y equals something. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. And then it reads y equals minus 3x. And that's in the form y equals ax. I could add a 0 to the end. It wouldn't change anything. And then I'd have y equals minus 3x plus 0. My b would be 0. My y-intercept would be 0. So this is definitely direct variation. A direct variation can be written in the form y equals ax. Here's an example of a direct variation, y equals 3x. If we were to create a table and put some x values in, we could calculate the y values. The y value would be 3 times the x value. When x equals minus 2, 3 times minus 2 equals minus 6, so y equals minus 6. When x equals minus 1, y equals minus 3. When x equals 0, y equals 0. And we could do the same for 1 and 2. That a and that 3, 
that we multiply by x to figure out what y is, that a and that 3 is known as the constant of variation. And I could change this equation, y equals 3x, and put it in uh, slope-intercept form, y equals 3x plus 0. And if I did that, it would be easy for you to see that that 3 is also the slope. The constant of variation is the slope of the line. It's even cooler than that. The constant a variation is the rate of change in y for a change in x. If I increase x by 1, I go from 0 to 1, and I multiply that 1, that increase of, of 1 by 3, I get the y value. If I go from an x of 0 to an x of 2, my x is increased by 2. My y is going to increase by 3 times 2. This table demonstrates a relationship between x and y values. Your job is to determine if this is a direct variation. If it is, what's the constant of variation? What's the slope? And then, can you write an equation that fits this data. Hit your pause button, give it a try, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Is the relationship between x and y that's shown in this table a direct variation? Well, to figure that out, we got to find out what mathematical operations we can perform on x that will result in a y value that's in the table. Let's start with minus 1, minus 4. What can we do to minus 1 mathematically so that it equals minus 4? Well, we could multiply minus 1 by 4, and that would equal minus 4. We could say 4x equals y. 4 times minus 1 equals minus 4. But we could also say 2x minus 2 equals y. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 minus 2 equals minus 4. So it could be either of those. And actually, there's quite a few other mathematical operations that we could perform on minus 1 so that it resulted in a y of minus 4. So now we've got to try these and see if they work for the other data points. Let's try 2x minus 2 equals y on the second data point, 0, 0. Let's put 0 in for x. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 equals minus 2. 0 minus 2 doesn't equal 0, so 2x minus 2 equals y doesn't work, and we can cast that out. How about 4x equals y? 4 times 0 equals 0, so 4x equals y works for both the first and the second data points. How about the third data point? 1 and 4. 4 times 1 equals 4. So that works. And all the others are going to work as well. 4 times the x value in our table equals the y value in our table. And that 4 is the constant of variation. It's also the slope. And we could write this equation as y equals 4x. As you get further and further into algebra, you're going to discover that there are a number of ways to say the same thing in algebra. There are a number of different forms that you can use to describe the relationship between x and y. We've been working on the slope-intercept form, y equals 2x plus 3. And that's one way to write that relationship. But there are other ways. And each of these different ways to write the relationship have certain advantages 
and may be preferable in certain situations. So we're going to learn several ways to write these relationships. And now we're going to learn how to write this relationship in function form. Is this really complicated? Is this like going to require huge mental gymnastics on your part to figure out? Is this really, really complicated? No. It's so easy, it's ridiculous. All you do is change y to function of x. You say function of x equals, in this case, 2x plus 3. I could also say y equals 2x plus 3 and nothing changed. Function of x equals 2x plus 3. Function of x equals y. I can interchange function of x and y, and I haven't changed a thing. I don't want to make this real complicated, but it doesn't have to be f of x either. It could also be g of x. f or g simply means that I'm going to perform an operation on x that will result in another value or a y value. Let's look at an example. Let's look at function of x equals 2x plus 3. And we've graphed this function. It's the same as y equals 2x plus 3. We've graphed it on the graph on the, on the, on the slide. One of the points on this line is the point 1, 5. x equals 1 and y equals 5. Well, how would this work in a function format equation? Would it look like this? You would substitute 1 for x, and you've got the function of 1 equals 2 times 1 plus 3, or the function of 1 equals 5. Another point on this line is minus 2 minus 1. And it would work the same way. My x value is minus 2. So the function of minus 2 equals 2 times minus 2 plus 3. Or function of minus 2 equals minus 1. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. I hope you found this easy. Let's evaluate function of x equals 4 minus 2x for an x value of minus 1. All we're going to do is substitute minus 1 for that x. And we've got function of minus 1 equals 4 minus 2 times minus 1. Or function of minus 1 equals 6. How about when x equals 4? Well, then we got the function of 4 equals 4 minus 2 times 4. Or the function of 4 equals minus 4. That's our lesson on direct variation and function form. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes to test whether you understand this concept. Well, I hope you had a good time, and I hope we see you again real soon.